A lot can happen in the world. What do we do? Who do we turn to? How do we handle it? Welcome to the Situation Room on Active FM. So we've been speaking about possessions. We've been speaking about what's in your hands. You've got to understand the true nature of those possessions. And we've been looking at the story of David when he fights Goliath. And, and what was the true nature of his possessions? He had stones, he had a sling, and, 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 and he had God. That, that, that's, what, that's what he had. But he was utterly convinced that God had given him the power to overcome this, this giant. And he believed with all of his might. He had faith in God, that God was going to give the victory for him over this giant, that God was going to deliver this giant into his hands. Why? Because the giant was coming against the will of God. And so we look at the, the apex of the battle in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 49 and 50. It says, reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he, he, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank deep into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. And so looking at that, yeah, David comes. He doesn't have a sword. He doesn't have armor. He doesn't have fighting experience in terms of fighting other men in battle. We know that he had experience and that God had trained him for this because he developed character and looking after his father's sheep, even defending them against lions and bears. We know that. And so God had readied him. God had gotten him prepared, you know, for, for the situation. And so you need to, like David, understand the true nature of what you have. In your understanding today, maybe you're sitting there and you're watching this thing and you, and you think, you know, I need money. But Jesus says in Matthew 6 verse 25, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or your body, what you will wear. Is life not more important than food and the body not more important than clothes? And so in your life, your life is worth more than your material possessions your life is worth more than the resources that are at your disposal if 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 if, if all your life is is what you have you don't have very much and and so what is it that you have what is it that you have the true nature behind what you have all right there's things that you have that are not physical that you need to use if you're gonna rise above the crisis you have your gifts the natural giftings that God has given you. God has laid giftings down inside of you. And I believe the vast majority of us have no clue about the incredibly powerful potential that, that lies behind those gifts. Because they're given by God. And, 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 and when we use them for His glory, God is going to not only you know, um, you know, help us to use our natural gifts, but He's going to take it further. And then another thing that we have is our character. And I want you to understand, you're not going to rise above this crisis if you do not obtain the character that God wants you to have. And you obtain that by applying the blood of Jesus. There's no other way to do it. You obtain the character by applying the blood of Jesus. And then faith. You have your faith. What I want you to realize is that a desire for money plus fear is a recipe for disaster. All right? And so you need to have faith. You need to put your faith in God. Not worry about what if and wonder if and all sorts of ifs. No, no. Put your faith in God and have courage courage is a tenacity i'm not going to give up no matter how difficult things go i'm going to get to the place whereby i can overcome and so you need to understand that yes we all need money we need money to be able to survive but while we need it we need to also understand that if what we're chasing after is money money will fail us okay if you chase after money money will fail you and so your life is more than possessions your life is about having life your life is about love your life has got to be about faith. If, if you have those things, then, then you're going to another level. And, and so you need to manage your money with faith. Or you can manage it with fear and you'll lose it all. I promise you right now, those who make this money decisions based on fear are going to lose all their money in this time. You're not going to keep your money. And also how you manage and invest your resources will determine what sort of future resources you're going to have. What you do with your money now is going to determine what you're going to have in the future. And understand, for example, just to give you an example of this, those who saved or invested prior to this crisis coming are well prepared for this crisis. But it's too late to prepare now. You cannot save and prepare for the crisis now. It's too late. We're in the crisis. And so you need to prepare for your future. You cannot prepare for now. You're in it. You, you've got to make the most with what you have. But you can prepare for the future. And so 
the most important part of resource management, the most important part of managing your money is generosity. And so I want to ask you this morning, how do you help others? Do you have an attitude of generosity? Okay, if you if you have an attitude of, of, of being a hoarder, you're going to lose everything. And so I just want to take you to, to back to what Jesus has won for us. In Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14, it says, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God? I want you to think about the incredible statement that is made in that verse there. How much more then, okay, how much more then will the blood of Christ, the blood of Jesus, who through the eternal spirit offered him, himself unblemished to God, he offered himself unblemished to God in our place. All right. I, I was reading something from, from um, you know, from Pastor Cesar Castellanos, where he was quoting Dr. Derek Prince, you know, uh, relating to this um, confession that we're making today. And, and that is the fact that God showed Dr. Derek Prince that there were three crosses. Who was the middle one aimed for? And it was... He, he answered and said it was aimed for Barabbas and God said to him no who was it who was supposed to go on that cross and then Dr. Prince realized oh no I was supposed to be there you see you and I were supposed to be on that cross Jesus took our death on that cross and so he did this as an unblemished sacrifice to what to cleanse our consciences from the acts that lead to death so by the blood of Jesus our conscience is clean our conscience is cleansed from acts that lead to death why? so that we may serve the living God and so he has the confession today. The blood of Jesus covers me. The grace of the Lord accompanies me. The power of the Lord frees me. So I want you to say that after me. So the blood of Jesus covers me. The grace of the Lord accompanies me. The power of the Lord frees me. Let's say it once more. The blood of Jesus covers me. The grace of the Lord accompanies me. The power of the Lord frees me. I just want you to let that marinate in your spirit for a second. You confess this over yourself. You confess this over your household. The blood of Jesus covers you, which means it's a protection. And the grace of the Lord accompanies you. The grace of the Lord goes with you. Wherever you go, the grace of God is going with you. And He's giving you the grace to rise above this crisis. And the power of the Lord frees, frees you. He frees you from all demonic oppression. He frees you from the spirit of fear if you will put your trust in Him. And so let's just pray together as we finish today's session. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for giving your life for me. I recognize that I'm a sinner and I repent of all the evil things that I've done. I accept the fact that you gave your life for mine. Thank you because the blood that you poured out on the cross of Calvary washes me and cleanses me from all wickedness. I recognize that I am like Barabbas who deserve death. Yet your love that surpasses all understanding reached me and redeemed me. The punishment that I deserve fell on you and, and by your wounds I am healed. <clears throat> and Lord, I just pray this over every one of us today. By your wounds we are healed. And we pray, Lord, that by your Spirit we will experience your liberation no matter what's going on in the world around us. And that we will see your glory. Lord, I just pray that every household that is represented by all those that are watching here today, will apply the blood of Jesus over their homes and over their families, and they will see the deliverance of the Lord. May you just keep people well and heal those that are sick. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus.